Five generations of Armenians have lived, toiled, and prospered in California. In the space of one century, the Armenian community of California has become the largest and the most influential Armenian community outside of Armenia. From the original settlement in Fresno, the Armenians have established communities in many parts of the state. But for the first 50 years, the story of the Armenians in California was the story of the Fresno Armenians. In 1883, Fresno was a dusty western town populated by southerners. It had a population of 1,100 people. In September of that year, a group of 43 Armenians from Marzavan, Turkey, arrived in Fresno. This was the first group of Armenian settlers coming directly to California. A picture of the Hagop Ajderian family shows four-year-old grandson Jonathan Sinanian clutching a straw hat. He was the first Armenian child to be born in California on January 6, 1884, three months after his mother arrived in Fresno. They called him Hovnatan. Hovnatan means Jonathan in Armenian. And they said that they picked on that name. Was that like Jonah in the, <laughs> it's a fish's belly. Jonathan crossed over the ocean, and the ocean set him out on land. This is the story of the Armenian community during the span of Jonathan Sinanian's lifetime, a story in which he played but a minor role. But how and where did it all begin? What was the history and the life of these first Armenian pioneers who came to Fresno. Why do a people seek to leave the land of their ancestors, the soil of their traditions? The historical Armenian homeland occupies the mountainous plateau in what is now eastern Turkey. Here, the Armenians developed into a distinct ethnic group about 3,000 years ago. They established kingdoms and became the first Christian nation. Here they created new forms of Christian culture, art, architecture, and literature. Some 600 years ago, the Ottoman Turks overran the Armenian homeland. Persecution, tyranny, and massacres became the order of the day. In the mid-19th century, the American Congregational Missionaries came to Turkey. Among these gentle hills of ancient Armenia, they established the Central Anatolia College in Marzavan, near the Black Sea. Many Armenian students attended the college. The missionaries influenced the Armenians of Marzavan and made them aware of America, a land of freedom across the sea. Frank M. Yanikian, native of Marzavan, then living in Philadelphia, was the first Armenian to arrive in Fresno in 1874. He disliked the place and quickly returned to his home in Pennsylvania. By 1885, other Yanikians, now known by the new name of Normart, or New Man, arrived in Fresno. They were entrepreneurs and sportsmen. The Normarts opened a bicycle shop. They took people on fishing and hunting excursions. One day, someone brought a two-headed donkey in for stuffing. From taxidermy, the Normarts went into the furrier business. As a girl, I remember stories about the Seropian family. They are all gone now. Jacob Seropian was the son of the first Protestant convert by the Congregational Missionaries in Marzavan. I never met Jacob Seropian, naturally, because he died many, many years ago. He died soon after arriving in Fresno. They say Jacob was a thin young man without beard. He left home in 1870 and headed for America. After a period of ill health in Worcester, Massachusetts, 
He arrived in Fresno by accident, probably in 1879, and he was in search of a hot, dry climate, and he became the first Armenian settler in California. From what I understand, he was en route to Los Angeles, and the train stopped in Fresno, and he stepped out, and the climate was nice, and it reminded him of his home in Marzavan, and so he just decided to stay in Fresno, and he didn't go, he didn't continue with his trip to Los Angeles. And the next year, his two older brothers, Gabed and Simon, joined him from Worcester. I remember the family telling me that these brothers were very strong and healthy men. And in 1881, Jacob returned to Marsvan and came back to California with two small half-brothers, George and John. We see John here on his wedding day. George was the last of the brothers to die in 1945, and I remember him well as a retired gentleman who is always reading the business section of the newspaper. The Seropians were astute in business, and they were very hard workers. In 1894, they fought the high freight rates of the Southern Pacific Railroad. They hired a mule caravan and drove their figs, raisins, and oranges 210 miles over rugged mountain roads to San Francisco. And this was a great event in California history because the newspapers sent their uh, reporter along with this mule train, and each day he would send in the report as to where they arrived and what was going on. So the whole city of Fresno was sitting and waiting for news to see what was going to happen. The Seropians built a pack, many packing houses. They stuffed figs with walnuts, something which had never been done in America, and called them fig dolma. Imagine a fig dolma. In the old country, we made dolma out of peppers, tomatoes, and eggplants, stuffed with spice, meat, and rice. The Seropians became millionaires, hiring hundreds of workers, mostly Armenian newcomers, who could not speak English yet. They came by families to earn a new life away from growing persecution. Many of these people worked for 75 cents a day, the women working side by side with the men. There were other families whose descendants have become a part of the fabric of the first Armenian generation in California. Krikor Arakelian was a timid boy of 11 when he arrived from Marzavan with his family. And they were with the first group of Armenian settlers in 1883. We see him in this picture as a robust businessman with a walrus mustache. By 1910, little Krikor had become the melon king of America and the first Armenian multimillionaire. They now called him Mr. Kalyan the most important Armenian in Fresno, perhaps the most important anybody in Fresno. Not all the early settlers were from Marzavan. Among the first generation of Armenians was Charles Enoch Sr. He was a tailor from Karpert. He and others set the example of successfully moving from crafts and trades into farming. As more Armenians like the Enochs came to California, the original Marzavan clan lost its dominance in the community. A steady trickle of Armenians came to California from 1885 to 1890, attracted by glowing reports of a Garden of Eden, of grapes the size of eggs and watermelons the size of boats. The climate and the fruits reminded them of Armenia. By 1894, the Armenians had been in Fresno for almost 15 years. By this time, Fresno had grown to about 11,000. Of these, only about 360 were Armenians who wanted very much to be a part of the new land. In the same year of 1894, the Armenians entered a float in the 4th of July parade. Jonathan Sinanian, the first Armenian born in California, had grown into a well-scrubbed boy of ten. From the sidelines, he watched the Fourth of July parade. Later, he was forced to stand for a photograph. Susie Markarian was the queen in the parade.
The earliest settlers, or those who had money, became the aristocracy of the Armenian colony. Not all of them became wealthy, however. Many of the newcomers worked for low wages and under poor conditions for their Armenian employers. Others worked for the railroad for 50 cents a day or for an acre of land. But because they felt they needed to feed their families, they took the money. Stories are retold of daily meals of bread and tanabur, a mixture of barley and diluted yogurt. As I look at that picture, I'm reminded of the Hagop Ejderian home. They had an old-fashioned garden that was bordered with uh, soda bottles. And the aroma of uh, hot biscuits always came out of that kitchen. But that was their home when I was a very little girl. As more Armenians arrived, a colony developed on the west side of town, which is now a part of Chinatown. The newcomers brought with them their strong family ties, their food and customs, their friendly city rivalries. But even in the turmoil of a new country, they pursued their urge for learning and their pride in their heritage. As early as 1890, they formed the Armenian Library Union two years before the establishment of the Fresno Public Library. The purpose was to make Armenians better citizens in their new home. The first 15 years of the new century were years of happiness and progress for the Armenians of Fresno, particularly for the women who were being emancipated from traditions. New families came into being, and a stable foundation established for future generations. These are my parents, Mugerditch and Lydia Aristakesian. My mother was a picture bride. She never met her husband until she came to Fresno, although they exchanged pictures. And uh, the match was made between my father's sister and my grandmother. My mother was a teacher and she was the church organist. But as it would happen, her life changed its course as she had to pack all her dreams and her belongings in her suitcases and come to the United States to marry her future husband. And life was very difficult for her because she was brought up in a genteel atmosphere and she had to go out and work in these packing houses. And you know, we had picnics just like in the clan gatherings in the old country. Soon, we said, in another generation, the Armenians will disappear. Our language will be gone. It was not a happy thought, but we felt it in our bones that our children would not remain Armenian. Those days back in the 1900s and 1910s were the golden years in Fresno. We loved this valley with its rivers. It was so much like old Armenia. We were happy. We went fishing and camping. We built churches schools, new homes. During these years, the Armenians of Fresno marveled at Yosemite and the other natural wonders of California. But it was not easy to become American and to retain their own cultural identities. Sometimes the choices were forced upon the newcomers. The original settlers from Marzavan were Protestants. Soon after their arrival, they were surprised that the missionaries had not built a congregational church in Fresno. So they organized the community church. The majority of its members and the minister were non-Armenians. Before long, the minister complained that the Armenians could not speak English well. He also claimed they were stingy in contributions to the church. The Armenians replied, that they were sending money to the needy people back in Marzavan, Turkey. Still, the pastor refused hymn books to them and compelled them to sit separately. As a result of this harassment, the Armenians pulled out of the Congregational Church and, in 1897, organized the first Armenian Presbyterian Church. Soon afterwards, others established the Pilgrim Armenian Congregational Church. Some left the traditional churches, joining the Salvation Army, 
or other small religious groups. Religion had become an avenue for assimilation. On October 4, 1900, Armenian apostolics dedicated the Holy Trinity Church. In 1913, it burned down. A new church was built. Across the railroad tracks at the corner of Ventura and M Streets, a few blocks distant from the first Armenian Presbyterian Church. The Holy Trinity Church became the focus of Armenian migration from the west to the east side of town. This area became the closest thing to a little Armenia they were to have in America. The noted author and playwright William Saroyan grew up in this neighborhood and immortalized in his book, My Name is Aram, the life of the first Armenian generation in Fresno. During the first ten years of the new century, the Armenian population increased 400% in California. Many were leaving their homeland because of Turkish persecution and tyranny. Around Fresno, the Armenians went into farming in great numbers. By 1910, over one-third of the almost 4,000 Armenians in Fresno County lived outside of the city in small towns. During these pre-World War I years, Jonathan Sinanian had matured into a man. He was a hard-working farmer, living a hermit-like existence. Through hard work and a flair for enterprise, the Armenians, in the space of a quarter of a century, rose from laborers, peddlers, and craftsmen to merchants, packing house magnates, great landowners, and industrialists. Armenian enterprise in agriculture continued. Malcolm Markarian leveled new land for his fig orchards to become in 1902 the largest in the world. By 1913, he was the fig king of America and was directing the planting of the 13,000-acre Forkner Fig Gardens. Years later, the area was to be a plush housing development from which the Armenians were excluded. In the years before the First World War, Fresno became a thriving agricultural metropolis of 40,000. We published nine Armenian newspapers in Fresno. There were 25 Armenian cultural organizations and 10 Armenian political parties and compatriotic unions and many old country coffee houses where old timers debated about politics and religion. Fresno became a powerful influence upon the thinking of Armenians everywhere. An Armenian school was established at the Holy Trinity Church in 1907. At this time, most of the Armenian children attended Emerson Public School, located in the center of Armenian town. Ninety percent of the students were Armenian. In those days, the Armenian children were called Turks by some of their classmates. These were fighting words, so one day the Armenian students decided to fight. Half-brothers George and John Seropian, K. Arakelian, together with Fourth of July Queen Susie Markarian, were among the eight who slugged it out with the non-Armenians, and the Armenians won. Slowly, Armenians were entering into American life into the National Guard and into professions, such as surveying. At Stanford University, they joined what were called eating clubs and graduated in engineering and geology. 
With the entrance of the United States into the First World War, loyal patriotic Armenian-American youths entered the army to fight in France. Others joined volunteer expeditionary forces to help the Allied powers regain from Turkey a lost homeland. Still others established a Red Cross unit at the Emerson School or protested publicly at the genocide conducted by the Turkish government when over a million and a half Armenians perished in the homeland. By 1922, a dream had come to an end. America had been the land of opportunity from where rich cousins could support their Armenian relatives. But genocide at the hands of Turkey meant that America became the land of necessity. We knew there would be no return to the land of our birth. Because of the Turkish massacres, more Armenians came to America. Finally, our great General Antronik arrived in Fresno, a hero to his people. They gathered around him at the picnics. It reminded my parents of the old days when they sat under the mulberry trees of the old country. The quiet breeze at dusk in this valley reminded them of the fresh wind of the Black Sea blowing across the hills of Marzavan. More than an era was coming to an end. The raisin fever was over. Soaring agricultural prices had attracted many Easterners and townspeople to speculate in farms and vineyards. After the war, prices fell sharply. Many Armenians went bankrupt. The shift of population now started to Los Angeles. Between the two world wars, discrimination and prejudice against the Armenians of Fresno had become commonplace. Some Armenians invited prejudice by clinging to the old ways, but mostly the prejudice was economic. The Armenians were hard workers and were tough competitors and were growing ever more numerous. They were not permitted to join the exclusive clubs the socialite ladies of the Sunnyside Country Club preferred to play golf by themselves. So the Armenians began forming their own athletic groups. It was not until 1929 that the first Armenian was allowed to be part of a high school football team. College sororities and fraternities banned Armenians. Restrictive covenants prevented sale of certain homes to Armenians. In 1927, the same year of General Antranik's death, the Fidelity Building was erected. But Armenian professional men were refused office space. From the earliest days of discrimination and prejudice, the Armenians had found a strong and stalwart friend in Dr. Chester Rowell, a physician and editor of the Fresno Morning Republican. But it was in vogue for most prominent people in Fresno to be anti-Armenian. Among the latter were some Armenians themselves. In these years, many dropped off the I-A-N suffix from their names. In response to prejudice and discrimination, the Triple X fraternity was founded in Fresno in 1918. In the early 1930s, the Armenian American Citizens League became the dominant Armenian organization. Its purposes were to ease the pain of assimilation by fostering the ideals of Americanism and in helping non-citizen Armenians to become citizens. The years of the Great Depression brought to a close the saga of the first generation of Armenians in California. Not all of the first settlers had died. Some lingered on, but their era was over. For 50 years, from 1880 to 1930, almost all Armenians in California lived in or near Fresno. Armenian history in California was essentially the history of the Armenians in Fresno, which had become a major center of Armenian culture. In time, the Armenians became the dominant economic group in the San Joaquin Valley. 
They could live where they wanted, enter any country club, buy any building. But economic depression now caused a great migration from Fresno. Already at the turn of the century, Armenians had begun to settle in small numbers in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Finally, in 1930, Los Angeles surpassed Fresno in its Armenian population. Armenians now carried their drive and abilities to many parts of California. They entered and excelled in new careers. Men like Ruben Mamoulian and Kirk Kerkorian achieved fame and fortune in the motion picture industry. In droves, the Armenians attended universities, studied law, medicine, political science. Armenians from California have come a long way during these short 100 years. They have risen to fame and prominence. George Duke Magian in state government, Chip Prashean in the United States Congress, Mike Connors in television, and George Mardigian, famous restaurateur, who became the friend of presidents. Armenians have entered into many fields, agriculture, business, the professions, and have contributed to the culture of America. As the old-timers of Jonathan Sinanian's era grew old and prepared to die, they must have seen, in the faces of the new generation, the acceptance of assimilation. Today, a hundred years after the coming of the first Armenians to Fresno, there is again a new tidal wave of Armenian immigrants to California this time to Los Angeles. They bring with them a new ethnic fervor. New generations of Armenians are now involved in causes the first Fresno generation long ago gave up for lost or never knew. Some dream again of the reestablishment of the ancestral homeland they have built commemorative monuments for the genocide committed against Armenians in 1915. And they demand justice from the Turkish government. Is history repeating itself? Are we repeating a cycle of immigration and assimilation? Jonathan Sinanian, by chance, the first Armenian born in California, and among the last of the first generations to die, has been a vehicle by which to relate this story of the first generation of California Armenians. He was born in 1884 and died in 1971. Great events and progress occurred during his lifetime, but he lived apart from them. Zanonian's lifespan covered a long journey of pilgrimage, poverty, prejudice, success, and Americanization. As with many other members of the first generation of Armenians in California, Jonathan Sinanian did not leave much information about those first pioneering years in Fresno. Life was one of hard work to survive and succeed in a difficult land. But what little we do know of these first California Armenians is a record of resolute will, of courage, and of material success. It is a legacy upon which future generations will continue to build. <laughs>